Happy Friday, Hawkeye parents and families, and welcome to our April Parent and Family Webinar. My name is Danielle Martinez, and I work in academic support and retention, and once again, I'll be the moderator for today's webinar. If you're new to our series, we hope that we provide you with some up-to-date information um, that may apply to your student experience here at the University of Iowa. Um, we know that parents and family members are an important part of a student's process, and so um, we hope that um, by including you in giving you some information about what is going on here on campus as well as how you can best support um, your student in their journey here. Um, we can all help work towards student success. Um, today's webinar is about summer fun as we look towards warmer months um, and looking at jobs and internships. Today we have Josh Fromm with us who works in uh, the Office of Student Employment and it is actually Josh's birthday so we would like to wish him a happy, happy birthday. Um, and so just as a reminder, each webinar is recorded and then posted online on the Academic Support and Retention website so it can be accessed at a later date um, or viewed by individuals who are not able to attend our live webinar. Therefore, your mic functions have been muted, um, but if you have a question, um, please feel free to type it into the chat uh, chat box which is um, on your screen and we'll make sure that we uh, answer the questions during the question and answer portion which will be just shortly after Josh's presentation. So without further ado, we'll get right to it um, with Josh. Happy birthday. Thank you Danielle. I, uh, I really appreciate the birthday wishes. I can't tell you how many jokes I get on this day. It's uh, the only good thing about having a birthday on April Fool's Day is nobody forgets it, and I don't forget. I don't forget <laughs> it as well. So, uh, so that is a benefit. So uh, welcome, parents and family members. Thank you for joining us today. Um, I am going to focus on, as Danielle said, kind of jobs and internships and what your student can do over the summer to uh, kind of market themselves, to gain some employment experience. Um, so I'm going to attack some of those things today and hopefully give you guys some information on um, new trends, things that uh, recruiters are looking for, um, how your student can benefit from having a job and how they can market themselves um, with their student jobs for full-time employment eventually. Um, so before I get started, just a little bit of background on myself. So uh, as Danielle said, I work in the student employment office. So I've been at the University of Iowa for about three years. Uh, I also um, teach a professional development course called UI STEP or Student to Employ Professional. Um, so through that class I teach about job searching, networking, how to stand out on your job, um, interviewing skills, things of that nature. So, um, so I'll bring some of those experiences to the table today. Um, before being at the University of Iowa I spent about six years as a recruiter and hiring manager. Uh, as well as a supervisor uh, for student advisors on, a, on a, another campus. So um, I will bring some positive stories and some horror stories to the table hopefully today with regards to some of the things we're going to talk about. Um, so discussing our topic today, uh, I'm going to start with kind of discussing why students should work over the summer. So uh, if some of your uh, if, if any of your uh, kids are coming home and staying with you over the summer, I'm sure there is uh, immediately one positive reason they should work for you uh, to get them out of the house a little bit. Um, but uh, we're also going to discuss some of the benefits uh, that they can get by working over the, over the summer. So uh, we're then going to talk about um, how you can kind of communicate the importance of uh, them getting involved and just learning outside of the classroom setting uh, as well. And hopefully, uh, hopefully through this, you'll you'll be thinking about some of the tips you can provide your students as far as how how they can stand out when they do get a job, how they can do do well on that job. Um, and then if you are looking to help your student gain employment over the summer, we have some resources toward the end. I'll hopefully be providing you. Um, to uh, to give them some access to jobs and job sites and things that we have at the university that may be able to help them. And then I have a few external websites that I use regularly um, in my career that I provide students that I think really give some fantastic information. So to start, the first thing I always I always talk about, um, whether it's with students or parents, is just the future outlook and why student employment is important. So. So I try to get, when I talk to students, I try to get them to think about it from a recruiter's point of view. Uh, and why should 
um, they hire you and why is it important to work? So just going through A, B, and C there, um, just asking you the question personally. So if you, maybe some of you do this for a living if you're a hiring manager, but who would you hire as an employer? So you got kind of three options there. You got the UI graduate, a UI graduate with a few years of experience, maybe an internship uh, that they've had over the summer. Um, and then you have C, which is somebody with an internship, uh, three years of employment experience, and then maybe Maybe they volunteer on campus. Maybe they're involved in a student organization. So some of your students may be involved uh, on campus in that way as well. And many of our students are, which, uh, which is fantastic for, for them personally and for our university as a whole uh, to have students that involved. But I think if I asked you who would you hire, it's, it's a pretty obvious answer, I think. Uh, most people, and I ask students this too, and they'll say, yeah, it's C. Well, why is that? Okay, well, they have more experience to bring to the table. And that's absolutely true. Um, the more diversif diversified the student's experiences are while they're at the university, the more chances they have to learn the skills um, necessary to be successful um, as an employee, not just as a student, but once they graduate as well. So we'll talk about some of those reasons uh, as to why that is important uh, for employers to see that type of experience. So just to provide you some, two, and these are all 2016 facts, so stuff that I've actually found within the last month, um, research regarding what employers are looking for um, with, your, with your students by the time that they graduate. So um, looking at that first bullet, I think this is a surprise um, to many people, just thinking, hey, I'm going to school, I'm learning a lot of valuable information, but employers are telling me I'm not quite ready on average. Um, you'll see fewer than three in ten employers view graduates as ready, and I think a lot of that has to do with just applying that knowledge from their classes into a real-world setting. So I think uh, on the University of Iowa campus, our, we, uh, we try to do what we can in our office to train student supervisors to try to provide those real-world settings on the job. I know internships, that's a big part of a student's development to gain that real-life experience. Uh, so we encourage college students to really apply that knowledge as much as they possibly can and hopefully be able to translate what they're learning into the classroom onto the job. Um, just looking at that second bullet, the broader college experience, I think when your students first came to the University of Iowa, um, you have the Iowa Challenge, the Iowa Excel saying, things that really focus on getting the students involved on campus. And not only will it, does that help their them have a more valuable experience here, it's really important for their future um, after Iowa as well. So um, just doing one thing, any extracurricular involvement, an internship, a student job on campus can double the amount of job opportunities available, which, which is really crazy to think about. Just having that, app, that opportunity to apply what they've learned in a real world setting can be extremely valuable for them. Um, so you see kind of the seven competencies there. Uh, the best thing when I see these, um, and they, they're very similar from year to year in what employers are looking for in students, is, um, is that you can, they can learn a lot of this in school. They can learn a lot of this stuff just by working, whether that job is within their field of study or not. Um, so, I mean, you see professional polish, teamwork, ownership, curiosity, all of that stuff hopefully um, they're getting not just in a school setting but outside that classroom setting as well. The consistent, uh, the consistent consensus too over the last several years, and this has really changed, uh, changed lately, um, no, matter, no matter really the industry, is skills are becoming more and more important. GPA and major is still important for a lot of careers. I mean, you got your very job specific careers, engineering, accounting, anybody in the medical field, uh, but a lot of jobs now are looking for a skill set and not quite as much uh, importance being placed on a major or a GPA. That doesn't mean they can't be fantastic selling points. They absolutely can be, uh, but hopefully students are able to, to supplement um, just those, those technical achievements um, with, uh, with additional knowledge that they can apply in work settings as well. So just thinking back to that first question to A, B, or C, 
uh, I think the big thing from an employer's perspective and a recruiter's perspective, I know when, uh, when I was hiring new college graduates, the big thing for me was if I hire somebody who has a lot of work experience already uh, coming right out of college, it just it saves me a lot of time uh, and energy as far as what I have to do to train that person. I don't have to train them on, hey, here's the value of showing up on time consistently, having a positive attitude, having professional communication at all times. There's a lot less that I have to do and worry about, frankly, uh, with students who have worked before. So I think that really uh, accentuates the importance of a student gaining work experience. So, um, so hopefully if a lot of your students have, uh, have jobs lined up for the summer, and even if they don't, there's, there's quite a few probably still out there. I know internships are still, uh, are still out there on our HireHawk website as well, and, and we'll go over just ways you, can, uh, ways you can help your students in that regard in a little bit. So this is one thing from a parent's perspective and being in the workforce probably yourself that you can really um, talk to your student about. This This might be the first time there, uh, and probably is the first time they've been out on their own. Um, maybe they've had jobs before, but they're, but they're really in the student, student mindset while they're here at the university, and for good reason, obviously. Um, but there is a big difference um, in a lot of um, training and conversations that need to take place with your students regarding just the, the the mindset difference between being a student on campus and being a employee of an organization, a company, a hospital, wherever it is your student might end up working. Um, and you can see kind of the, um, it goes from side to side, kind of a difference in the mindset. Uh, I think the one thing that students need to understand with regards to the difference is just thinking about, hey, I have a lecture with 300 students in my intro to social sociology class, for instance. What happens if I'm late to class? Honestly, probably not a whole lot. What happens if I miss an assignment deadline by a day? You might get 10% off. Some instructors, maybe they're a little bit more strict than that. Um, but in a workplace environment, what happens, and, and you guys, I think, know this, what happens if you're late too often? or miss work too often. Pretty good chance you're going to get fired. Um, another thing, you miss too many deadlines, the same thing, uh, the same thing um, in that circumstance. So there, there is a difference in mindset and kind of the more, um, the more serious nature uh, of a job in that it's very oriented to the or organization and not the individual. So in college, they're focusing on bettering themselves. Um, they're the primary owner of their time you know, they, they set their classes. A lot of times there's, there's some limits on when they can have classes depending on the, um, the semester and the classes that are available. But, but more, more often than not, they have the chance to pick. Um, obviously, in many situations, we don't get to pick our work hours a lot of times. So a big difference there. So I think um, it's really important to co communicate with our students just some of the differences there and just make sure that they're going into a work environment ready to be successful. Um, the bottom there is a, the stunning truth. So it's a statistic I really like. Um, and it might surprise some of you as well. And that's only 15% of workers are actually fired for skills pertaining to their job. So, you know, when we, we're going to talk about just some of those little things your students can do to be successful. A lot of them are, are basic, showing up on time, being professional, communicating, um, communicating effectively with peers, with customers, clients, whoever that may be. Um, so the story I always like to share is, um, unfortunately, in my career, I had to fire eight people. Um, one of those people I fired for skills pertaining to the job. So very close to that's what the statistic is. So, you know, what I talk to students about is, that one student, it took me, a, or excuse me, one young professional, it took me a year to fire him. He couldn't do the job from the first day he started until the last day he left, but it took me a year to end up getting rid of him and getting somebody else. And, and um, the reason, and, I, and students always ask, well, why did it take so long? Well, he did everything right. He knew he was struggling. He came and asked me for help. He went to fellow team members for help. Um, he um, proactively went and shadowed somebody on his off shift. 
um, and look to, to gain assistance that way. Everybody liked him. He was nice to the students he talked to. So really, he was everything I wanted an employee except for the fact that he couldn't do his job well. But just for the fact that he did a lot of those little things well and he understood what, um, what hard work was all about and did a lot of those basics right, um, it took me a long time to uh, a long time to get to the point where I had to get somebody else because I really wanted him to succeed. So, you know, for you talking with your students about working, I think focusing on some of those basics, focusing on just the little things that they can do to stand out. I call it always control the controllables. So, you know, there's a lot of things about our jobs and in our careers maybe that we can't control, especially if you work for for a bigger organization but you know, what you can control is some of these things listed how do you do um, do the normal things that are expected of you you know show up on time um, dress code not using cell phones when inappropriate obviously I think that's a big issue these days not just with students but with all professionals um, and that that fifth bullet I put it in all caps for a reason just being proactive so you know a lot of we have so many distractions these days most jobs you have the internet at your fingertips you have your phone on you so teaching your students how to stand out on the job well what happens when you're done with your work you know for me that tells me a lot about a young professional is what they do in that circumstance so if they're done with their work do they go right to the internet do they go right to their phone or do they, do they ask their supervisor if there's anything they can help with um, do they talk to their fellow um, coworkers and see if they can help in any way? You know, those are the those are the young professionals that really stand out in the workplace. So I'd encourage you to talk to your students about that. You know, talk to them about their jobs. So I know a lot of you probably ask them how's school going. Well, if they're working or they get a job in the summer, ask them how their job is going as well. Um, you know, talk to them specifically about situations they face and, and hopefully give them some advice um, on situations that you've dealt with and how you've, uh, how you've helped improve yourself in that way as well. So just a few things there kind of with the basics of, of working that can really help your students stand out. So like I said, I think the conversations about their jobs are going to be so critical when they when they work during the summer, especially for those of uh, those of you who have a son or daughter living at home. Um, so talk to them about how to stand out in the workplace. So just reading some of those, I have um, I kind of highlighted four, six, and seven specifically. So you know their mindset uh, with regards to uh, to their job. Are they just worried about their job, or are they trying to learn a little bit more? So I think focusing on having them learn a little bit about uh, learn a little bit about what the organization is all about on top of just their role um, can be a great way to to help them be noticed. Um, projecting the right image, I think that's always extremely important for a young professional. It's just to develop a reputation for being trustworthy. Like we said earlier, kind of hitting all those deadlines, doing what you can to kind of over deliver. Uh, and trying to raise their their visibility as much as possible, which which honestly comes from just asking for more work sometimes, um, asking for further responsibility, volunteering for things. Uh, that's a great way to become a go-to person. And, and then I always recommend for students to to get a mentor at their job. Um, so I think at home you can help with that. I think you can help mentor them as far as being successful in the workplace. But what can they do to reach out to other? Uh, to other coworkers, to supervisors, to, to help give them a leg up. What questions can they ask them? Can they give them advice on how to, maybe if you're in an internship, um, end up getting a full-time job offer at some point? What can you do to improve uh, from a, an employee standpoint? So a lot of you, and maybe some of you, maybe some not, but have any of you gotten a, a, uh, a look or a question from a student when you talk about getting, uh, having them get a job and work? Why should I work, Mom? Why should I work, Dad? I think we get that question a lot, especially for incoming freshmen uh, when we go through orientation and things like that. And some of you might have experienced that uh, in the past as well. 
Um, so just some reasons to talk with them about why they should gain a job over the summer. So, you know, I think that the, uh, there's obvious things up there, the resume builder, things like that. I think the reference opportunities are super important for students um, specifically. So um, I always talk, when I talk to students about references in particular, you know, I always encourage them to get a minimum of three to five references. This could be supervisors. This could be mentors they have on campus. It could be professors that know them very well. Um, but, you know, when I talk about that, I, I discuss my own experiences. I think one of my favorite parts of my past job from an entertainment standpoint was calling references. Uh, so that was part of it. When we got towards the end, I would call references. Uh, I'd get people that would list their parents. I'd get people who listed somebody who fired them in the past. I'd get people who uh, didn't tell the references that they were listing them as a reference. So, you know, we get that all the time. So encouraging your students to, you know, do a great job and talk regularly with uh, their supervisor and people that that they work with on a regular basis to to ask for those references because those are going to be super important in their future uh, career search as well. Um, just looking at the rest of them, I think learning I think learning about what you like and dislike in a work environment is so important um, because there are a lot of students that switch majors. It just happens. I mean, you. A lot of people come into school not knowing exactly what they want to do. I know I was a stu that student myself. I switched majors four times within the business school alone while I was at the University of Iowa. Um, I think the more experiences they gain um, in the work environment, the more they can figure out what it is they like and what it is they don't like. Um, so as part of my UI STEP program, I have a student organization, and one of my uh, students who was my president for about a year and a half before she graduated. She had three internships from her sophomore year to senior year. Um, all of them were involved specifically with the major she had at the time. And every single time she had the internship, she ended up changing majors. So she figured out through her experiences that that is not what she wanted to do for the rest of her life. And now, being a graduate, she ended up coming back and she's working in a lab here at the University of Iowa, um, which, was her, uh, which was her student job um, during the school year. So the best thing for her, and I, I commend her for it all the time, is just her willingness to get involved and gain those experiences helps save her a lot of stress in the long run. I'd rather, much rather have students figure that out now than get into their career for five years and get to be close to 30 and have to restart um, and restart their career and think about it from uh, from level one. So learning what you like and dislike can, can really help the students figure out where they want to go academically as well. Um, and we have a lot of students who end up, um, based on their student job, going into that field. I've seen that a number of times. My, my boss is a fantastic example. She's been here, Iowa, I think 34 years now. Um, she was a biology major, but she worked in the financial aid office. She's worked in the financial aid office now for 34 years. So um, just the fact that um, she was willing to work and found work as a student and found what she really enjoyed has led to a great career for her. So, a lot of things can be gained for from that experience, um, and hopefully your students see that. And if they need a little convincing, hopefully you can provide that for them or send them to me. I'd be happy to do it myself as well and give them some um, some statistics and just some personal experiences that uh, uh, that can steer them in that direction. So just to finish off today, there's a number of resources um, that students can use that your students can use to really put themselves in a good position. So here's three University of Iowa resources. Uh, the Pomeranz Career Center is a fantastic website with a lot of resources. I mean, you can find stuff on resumes, cover letters, um, networking events, career fairs that are upcoming. Uh, they do one-on-one -on -one advising. They have a ton of career development courses now um, that students can take that I'd, I'd highly recommend. Uh, there's a lot of great information and resources out there. Um, and I tell students all the time, you're paying for this stuff with, as part of your tuition, so utilize it. 
you know, if, if I go back and try to get an, my own personal career coach, it's going to probably cost me some money, right? They have that as part of their tuition here at the university. So um, getting them to kind of take advantage of those resources while they're here, um, that's something that, that they should take advantage of. That bottom link is HiraHawk. That is our specific University of Iowa system um, that we use to post full, not just student employment jobs, so on-campus type jobs, uh, part-time jobs on campus, but we also post internships and full-time jobs on that same system. And this is a system where employers are coming directly to the University of Iowa because they're looking for University of Iowa students. Um, so having your student utilize that resource, if they're looking for a summer job, um, they can search via that Hire Hawk system. And then finally, here's just some, some additional career-related websites that, that I use for my classes and that I use to kind of stay up to date in specific trends. So um, there's some fantastic stuff here. Um, some entertaining things uh, as well, some things where they can research their future careers, they can, uh, they can take a look at, you know, information like what, what is their expected salary in this career, um, how can we assist in your job search, there's a lot of different ways um, that these resources can help. So um, I believe Danielle will talk to you a little bit about the archive session and things like that, but these websites should be available for you. Um, if you want to utilize them or provide these to your students. So I think that is pretty much all for me and I'll hand it to Danielle. Awesome. Thanks so much, Josh, for all the great information. And Josh was correct that we will be send when we send out um, sort of a survey about how folks are liking the parent and family webinars and what we what you might want to hear about in the future. We will also send all the links that sort of Josh has mentioned so that if you want to click uh, directly on sort of what's going on or um, want to work with your student on searching for a job, you can do that. We're going to move into the question and answer portion. And so uh, just a reminder that um, we have lots of folks on the webinar, and so we won't be able to um, answer specifics about your student experience, but can provide general information that might be helpful in guiding your student. Um, so if you have a question, please feel free please feel free to type it into the question box um, and then we'll do our best to answer them. Um, if, we do, if we don't get to your question, um, we will make sure that we uh, outreach to you via email um, and then a University of Iowa staff member will uh, connect with you. So, um, looks like we have some questions coming in. So, the first is, um, are evaluations for student employees required? And um, what kind of feedback do they get that might be helpful for them? Yeah, so that's a great question. And, and to be honest, this really depends on the department. They, there's, there's roughly 250 departments at the University of Iowa. Um, so a lot of them do things in different ways. And, and we know that some are better at providing that feedback to others. So what we have tried to do as an office um, specifically is make sure that all of our departments have the resources necessary to provide that feedback. So uh, we encourage one-on-one -on -one type feedback, we encourage um, regular reviews, things like that. One thing our office has done is provided resources from a, um, a procedural standpoint. We give sample, uh, we provide employers with sample um, sample reviews and things like that uh, and really encourage continuous communication. I think it's important for our supervisors to know that they are part of the education of the student. So whether they signed up for it or not, they're really part, uh, part of that education experience from a teaching standpoint. They're just teaching in a little bit different way. So um, it varies, um, but we, we have seen a lot of improvement in that increasing as far as the amount of feedback students are getting and, are, and, and we're definitely going to continue to try to um, increase the awareness of supervisors about what their role should be. So Josh, another question that we got is, um, do first year students often get hired as interns at companies? Or what kinds of companies hire first year students? Yeah, so first year is, there are some that hire first year students. I think mostly, I think your sophomore year, you know, after your sophomore year is probably the best time to start looking. 
But at the same time, I've had students specifically who, if they become involved with classes they're interested in on campus, I've had students who go to office hours regularly, form a relationship with an instructor, and they offer them a research position or they offer them an internship. So, you know, I would really recommend them being proactive in their classes, especially the ones that they like, because you never know what can come out of that. And I think the one thing for them to know is, the professors, a lot of them have been in the field, so it's a great way to network and learn a lot about their field um, and learn a lot about opportunities that might be out there that may not be advertised. So we have more of a scenario question now, which is, so if a student has been working on campus and then they go home for the summer and then they return back the next fall, um, can they return back to that same job? Yeah, there's a lot, plenty of jobs like that, and I think on the job posting, um, especially if they use the higher hawk system, they will say the duration uh, on that. Uh, they will let the student know if they're requiring summer uh, as part of the job. So, you know, we encourage students, if you read through it and they look, they're looking for somebody that can work through the summer, maybe don't apply for that um, and go on to the next job that's available. And the good thing for students is there's such a variety. At any given time, we have anywhere from 250 to you know, when it gets close to the semester, seven, eight hundred jobs posted. But probably about, they're all in the surrounding Iowa City area, say probably about 40 percent of those um, on a normal basis are right on campus here. So a lot of options, but that's going to be gone through with the student through the application process or at the very least through the interview process. So we have another question about sort of planning for next year. So um, a stud students who have been awarded work study and want to make sure that they secure an on-campus job um, for their second year, maybe even their third year, sure. um, when is a good time to sort of go on to hire a hawk to yeah. look for jobs in the fall semester? There's some question about maybe in August or if they need to be doing it sooner or later. Great question. And the Employers can post jobs for next year at any given time. So we have actually recommended that employers post it as early as possible so they can fill their positions early and, you know, they don't have to worry about the hiring process during the onboarding period in the fall where there's tons of new students, there's tons of stuff going on, you're extremely busy. Um, and the same from a student's perspective. I wouldn't wait till August. You can, and there's going to be a lot of jobs out there. but. Um, starting in May or June, there, we're already posting, um, and we post every single day. Now, I would say for the fall, it doesn't really pick up till probably mid to end July. That's when you're going to start to get more and more jobs that are posted, but it's not going to hurt for the student to go on there regularly. And the best thing about the system, too, is they can save their searches um, and have those have any matching jobs based on their preferences emailed to them. Um, so they don't really have to go out and search every single job every day to find one. They can set up the search for themselves. So again, with HireHawk, if they have any questions on that, our office will definitely help. Um, we've also created some tutorials and step-by-step -step instructions for students on how to use that. But my, my advice, start as early as possible, beat the mad rush of everyone coming back looking for jobs at the same time. So our last question for today is how do students um, or what advice or tips do you have for students to best balance their coursework and um, their life as a, as a student employee? Yeah, so that's a normal question that we get is, all right, my student, if they work 10 hours a week, that's 10 hours that they can't spend studying. While that's technically true, I think that the majority of our students, and it, I ask this exact question in, um, in each of my workforce development sessions I have, which is a, there's about 10 of them every semester, um, I ask this, the question, do you think that your having a job on campus helps or hurts your academics? Majority of them say it helps, and I ask them why. That makes no sense. You, that's less time you have to study. And, the answer I get consistently is it forces them to manage their time better. They don't have time to procrastinate. They don't have time to get into bad habits with regards to that. And, you know, I know my first two years at Iowa, I didn't work. I tell the students I got super great at playing PlayStation. 
uh, but I didn't get a lot of benefit out of that either financially or from a developmental standpoint. So um, I think time management is the big advantage of working on campus because employers on our campus are great at working with students' schedules as well. If you have a midterm or something like that, as long as you're telling them ahead of time, they'll work that around. Uh, they'll work around that for your work schedule and things like that. So I think time management is the big uh, benefit. One of the big benefits of them working is they improve that consistently over time. So that looks like that's all the questions we have, and that's the, the end of our webinar for you to all today. Um, thank you so much to Josh for coming in on his birthday and joining us today. Sure. Um, just a reminder that all webinars are posted at uc.uiowa.edu backslash family dash resources. Um, and if you have additional questions, they can be sent to our office at uc-retention at uiowa.edu for a response from a University of Iowa staff member. So please join us next month, which will be our last webinar of this academic year, which is Homeward Bound, um, Managing the Summer Transition and Getting to the Second Year with Academic Support and Retention and University Counseling Service. And that will be Friday, May 6th from noon to 1. So we hope uh, that you have a great rest of your Friday, and on Iowa, go Hawks! <laughs>